Welcome to this Community Viz video tutorial. This tutorial is about scenario analysis. We'll cover some scenario analysis concepts. We'll talk about how scenarios are implemented in Community Viz, and we'll give a few scenario analysis best practices. Scenarios are a way of thinking about the future. Rather than simply understanding existing conditions, we want to understand how the future may play out in the next year or five years or a decade. For example, here's Cape Cod today. What's going to happen to it? Well, that depends in part on external forces that are largely beyond our control. Examples might be population growth or the economy. But it also depends partly on choices and actions we take today. Those can, if we choose, influence how our future plays out. The example here is planning policy. The problem is that there are so many different possible external events and so many different possible choices and actions that there is an infinite number of permutations of possible futures, and this is why predicting the future is hard. What scenario analysis does is try to take some snapshots of those different alternative futures and study a few of them to learn more about the rest. One way we study those scenarios is by measuring them using something called indicators. So here, for example, the top Cape Cod is getting an A plus in one category, maybe that's transportation, and a C minus in another category, maybe that's water quality. And you can see the other Cape Cods are getting different scores on the same measurements. This is a common analogy. It's called the report card analogy. And it's good, but it's not perfect for a couple of reasons. One is indicators don't necessarily have to be good and bad. They can simply be neutral measurements. Another is the goal is not necessarily to find the scenario with the highest grade point average or the somehow best indicators. The more important point is to understand how choices and actions we take today influence these future outcomes. And based on that, be able to make more informed choices and therefore to make better plans. So what does this look like in community viz? Well, the existing conditions usually show up as map layers and other input data in a community viz analysis. There are lots of ways to model external forces, but one common way is to use variable assumptions. For example, here we have a variable assumption for passenger car fuel efficiency. Probably not something that we can influence very well with local planning policy, but something that may influence our long-term indicators. We make these variable so we can test how dependent our outcomes are on these unknowns. Choices and actions, again, can be modeled in a number of different ways in community viz. The most classic or common way is to paint or sketch future land use maps and different alternatives. How do we look at scenarios? Well, many visual ways. We look at them on the map. We may look at them in 3D. We look at them in tables and charts. Here's the scenario comparison window in Community Viz. And how do we measure them? Well, we measure them with indicators that are often tabular in nature, but we like to chart because they're easier to see. These charts, for example, are showing three different indicators. On the left, one scenario. On the right, another scenario. Let's look at how scenarios are implemented in Community Viz. Here I have a sample analysis. It has two scenarios. One is called Rural, and the other is called Village. Now normally I can do all my work within one window, but for purposes of this video I'm going to open up two windows so it's easier to see what's going on side by side. I have the Rural scenario on this side and the Village scenario on this side. Across scenarios, Layers are shared, so the, the water tanks layer, the proposed buildings layer, the proposed roads layer, these layers exist in all scenarios. And if I add a new layer to an analysis, it'll automatically be added across all scenarios. Also, the status of whether it's a dynamic layer or a reference layer that is a non-dynamic layer is the same across all scenarios. The symbology is the same across all scenarios. In the case of reference layers, in fact, the features are identical. Notice this wetland is the exact same as this wetland. However, in the case of dynamic layers, features can be different. 
So the proposed buildings in rural is this set of green and red squares, and in village, this set of green and red squares. So everything's been the same up till now, except for the features themselves. Other similarities between scenarios, they all have the same charts. Charts exist across all scenarios. It's just that they might be displaying different data if you're looking at, say, the rural scenario or the village scenario, different results. Similarly, alerts, indicators, and assumptions that have been created are the same across all scenarios, though again, they may have different values. And if I've written dynamic attribute formulas or indicator formulas, those formulas apply to all scenarios. Though again, they might produce different results for different scenarios. So now let's summarize those points. In community viz, scenarios have the same map layers, symbology for each layer, and whether a layer is dynamic. The reference layers, including all their features and attribute values, are the same in all scenarios. Dynamic attribute formulas are the same in all scenarios as our indicator formulas, charts created, assumptions created, and alerts created. What may be different is the features within map layers and then the values generated by all these formulas, including dynamic attribute formulas, indicator formulas, chart values, assumption values, and whether an alert is triggered. Now there are some exceptions to this for advanced users. Those include linked layers and scenario specific indicators. But for most purposes, this is a good list. Now let's talk about a few best practices for scenario analysis. The first is to use about five or fewer scenarios per project. The idea of scenarios is to illustrate clearly distinguishable themes if you want to make small changes, say to an assumption or to move one or two features around, those can be done within one scenario. You don't have to create a whole new scenario for every change you make. If you have a lot more than five scenarios, that's hard on both the computer and your audience. Too much to keep track of. So five is a good rule of thumb. The second best practice is when you're setting up an analysis, Set up most of it first in a single scenario. Set up your formulas for dynamic attributes and indicators, set up your charts, and then start adding additional scenarios. Because CommunityViz handles the scenario coordination for you, this is a much easier way to work. Finally, make your scenarios be fair or apples to apples comparisons. That way, it's easier to understand what's changing between the different scenarios. It gives you better information about your scenario analysis. A couple of ways to do this are to lock assumptions together across scenarios, unless there's a reason not to, and to avoid making favorites until late in the process. If you have one baseline scenario, one scenario that's terrible, and one scenario that's great, you're not really doing a fair apples to apples comparison and you probably won't learn as much as if you start with more balanced comparisons. Thank you for watching this Community Viz video tutorial. For more video tutorials and Community Viz resources, please visit the website.